Hello and welcome. I'm Joseph Hoffman, and today we are going to learn one of the most famous classical pieces of all time, Fur Elise. The great Ludwig von Beethoven composed Fur Elise a little over 200 years ago in Vienna, and then dedicated it to a mysterious woman named Elise. In German, Fur Elise means for Elise. And who was this woman Elise? No one knows. But as you listen to Fur Elise, you can get some hints about how Beethoven felt about her. By the end of this video, you're going to be playing one of the most famous, beloved classical piano pieces of all time. By the way, this Fur Elise tutorial is my intermediate level four tutorial, which is ideal for anyone with about four or more years experience with piano. In this tutorial, we'll be learning Beethoven's original version of the Fur Elise main theme. To help you master this song, I highly recommend that you get the accompanying sheet music for this tutorial, which is available for purchase online at the Hoffman Academy store. Or if you're a premium member of Hoffman Academy, the sheet music is free, included with your premium membership. If you have less than three or four years experience, you may want to check out my easy level one tutorial or my super easy preparatory level tutorial. Finally, if you're a really experienced pianist with five or six years of training or more, and you'd like to learn Beethoven's full advanced version of Fury Elise, which is much longer and has four additional sections, then check out my level six tutorial. Okay, let's come to the piano and start learning. So first let's check out the sheet music. And one thing that's different about my tutorials is I love to analyze the music before I start to learn to play it. And you'll find that that's useful. You'll actually be able to learn it faster if you understand what the chords are and how they're working together to build the music. Then you'll be able to learn it and memorize it faster. So you see here in the beginning, this opening main Fury Lease theme. But then starting right here, as we get to that A, now we've got this kind of arpeggio, not kind of, it is an arpeggio, which actually is a chord. And then it goes to this measure, which arpeggiates through another chord, which leads to this measure, which arpeggiates yet another chord. So what I'd like you to do is figure out what are those chords. Now, if you don't know how to analyze chords, that's okay. Just figure out the letter names of each note. So I'd like you to pause the video. And if you have the sheet music, which I recommend that you download from our website, and there's a link below this video where you can do that, get the sheet music for this lesson and write in the letter names of the notes you see in these three measures. Put, press pause to figure out those notes. And if you can't figure out the chords, do that too and then press play and I'll go over the answer with you. Okay, let's check out this first measure that I asked you to analyze. And here are all the letter names of those notes. And you'll notice kind of a pattern. They're all A's and C's and E's. And uh, they're kind of in a somewhat of a mixed up order, but if you put those three letters together, that is the A minor chord, which is the key of Fury Lee. So we could also call that the one chord, which is written like this in Roman numerals. We use lowercase because it's minor. Now going on to this measure, here are the correct answers for all the notes. And you'll see again some patterns. We've got E, E, G sharp, E, G sharp, B. E, G sharp, B is the E major chord, which we can write like this. And the Roman numeral is five. That is the five chord, called so because E is a fifth above A. So A is our root or tonic of the one chord, and E is the root of the five chord, which is also called the dominant. So we have tonic, to dominant, and then in this measure, what do we have? Here are the letter names for those notes. Once again, you'll see all these A's and C's and E's. What chord is that? Well, that's our tonic, or one chord again, or A minor. Chords have a lot of names. We could call that tonic, or one, or A minor. We're in the key of A minor, so that makes it the one chord. Okay, so from the beginning, 
Say it with me. One chord, five chord, one chord. And then you'll see on this next line, once again, one chord, five chord, and then these two notes don't really, well, the C doesn't belong in the chord, but then we go to the B and then back to the one chord. Good, now I'd like you to write in your music those harmonies, write in both the Roman numeral, the one, again, which stands for a tonic, and the A minor symbol, which is capital A, little m, and then for all the five chords, write in a capital V, Roman numeral five, and capital E for E major. So write that, press pause, write that, those chord symbols in your music, then press play to go on. Next, let's learn how to play the right hand part. Okay, we start with finger four on E. I'll play through just this first section once, and then I'll have you press pause and try it on your own. First ending. Good. And from the beginning, I want you to be in the habit of floating your wrist up at the end of each phrase. Notice how that will make that last note gentle instead of hammering the last note of the phrase, use your wrist to make that really beautiful. Float up. Float up. Float up. Now press pause and work on that entire section just right hand alone. Be careful to follow the fingerings and use the chords that we figured out to help you think about and memorize more quickly the notes that you're playing. Pause to work on that section on your own, then press play to go on. Now, let's look at the left hand part. Again, thinking of the chords and the harmonies that you're doing will help you learn these patterns more quickly. Um, we start with a one chord, but instead of playing it like this, we're, using, we're skipping the third of the chord, which is the C, and going straight from the root to the fifth root with a five, two, one fingering, five, two, one. And then going on to the dominant chord or the five chord, we come down to this low E, reach up an octave, and then finger two is gonna glide over to that G sharp. Remember, we're playing an E major chord here, but we're skipping over all the notes in between the first two E's, E, E, and then G sharp. So try that for me now. Let's go back to the one chord. Try this. A, E, A, and then E, E, G sharp, then back to A, E, A. Now press pause and try those three measures until you're comfortable with it, then press play to go on. Okay, now as far as the left hand goes, if you go on to line two, you'll see we have the same pattern again. We have A, E, A, and then E, E, G sharp for the five chord, then back to the one chord pattern. Okay, so we already know that. Then when we get to the second ending, which by the way, in case you forgot, we do the first ending the first time, then it repeats back to the beginning. Then when we get here the second time, we skip the first ending and go straight to the second ending. And now we have this new theme the right hand steps up. And we get a couple of new chords now. So we're going to analyze some more chords. I'd like you to press pause and figure out the letters for all the notes in these three measures, but ignore the note that's shaded out because that note actually doesn't belong to the chord. It's called an appoggiatura. Listen, see this note right here? That note isn't part of the chord. It just kind of creates some feeling by reaching actually one note above the chord note, which is this E. That's really beautiful, isn't it? It's called an appoggiatura. 
So leave out that note in each measure, the note that's shaded out, and figure out the letters for all the other notes and see if you can figure out what chord that is too. Press pause to try analyzing the notes and chords and then press play to go on. Okay, so in this measure we have C's and E's and G's. And what chord does that make if we put C, E, and G together? That's a C major chord. C plus E plus G put together in any order always makes a C major chord. The order doesn't really matter, although you'll usually find the root of the chord, which is C, in this case, on the bottom. That's the most common. Otherwise, it's an inversion. So that's a C major chord. And then here we have G's and B's and D's and an F. If you put G plus B plus D plus F together, that makes a G7 chord. So we have a C major to G7 back to, what do we get here? We have A and C and E. What does that make? That's our one chord or tonic. Okay, so if we're doing Roman numerals, that C chord could be the three chord in A minor. And then this G7, we could call a five seven of three, which is really how it's functioning here. Or we could say that temporarily we transposed or modulated to the key of C. So it's kind of like a one and five seven. Now you could argue how to analyze the Roman numerals. So let's say just for now that that's a C major going to a G seven. And then that brings us back to our A minor. And then here, Look, we just have this one B and then a whole bunch of E's. A whole bunch of E's. E, 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 E. E's up the piano, which I would call a five chord. Even though there's no G sharp, it kind of implies that chord there. Okay, now press pause and let's go ahead and write those chord symbols in your sheet music. So you can have that to reference. And again, I think this will help you memorize and learn this song faster to know what chord you're playing. Now let's try to actually play this. So as we come out of the second ending, our finger one will have to shift up to B and then we just step up to E. And then we've got this beautiful pattern where we come down to G, then up a seventh, step down, step down, then we go down to F, up a seventh, step down, step down. Then E, up a seventh, step down, step down. Do you see that pattern? In music, that's called a sequence, where you have the same pattern repeating, either going down by steps or going up by steps. So the pattern first starts on G, then we do the same pattern on F, up a seventh, two step downs, then E, up a seventh, step down, step down. So effective. Isn't that amazingly beautiful how Beethoven does that? Such brilliant and simple composing. I think Beethoven was such a genius at making things so exquisite and simple at the same time. Now after you finish that sequence, the right hand's gonna go E, E, then the left hand takes a turn, then E, E, one octave up. So go ahead and press pause and work on that section right hand alone, then press play to go on. Okay, let's check out the left hand. Now for this section, we have C, G, C. So again, we're kind of going through this arpeggio up a fifth, then up another fourth. Can you try that? C, G, C. Use fingers five, two, one. C, G, C. Then we go to our G chord. So we're gonna go G, up an octave to G, and then to B. So use finger five, one, then just glide finger two over. Okay, once again we have C, G, C. 
and the right hand plays, then G, G, B. Good. Then we come back to A, E, A. And now here's the trickiest part, maybe in this whole piece, where we go five down here on this low E, E, and then quickly but gracefully, we've got a glide finger two all the way up to this E. Five, one, two. And you're gonna use pedal here. And I want you to just do this probably, oh, I don't know, a hundred times until you're just really comfortable. You're gonna to have to eventually be able to do this pretty quickly, but really delicately. And that's the trick, you know. It's one thing to be able to play fast and loud and kind of hammer your way through it, but it's gotta be gentle. So think of staying flexible in your wrist and just floating your finger two over to that E. Five, one, two. Five, one, two. Five, one, two. Now there are other possible fingerings for this, but as I've experimented with different ones, this is the one that will give you the most gentle sound. And when I'm choosing a fingering, I'm always thinking, what is gonna give me the, the sound I'm looking for? Not just what will get the job done. When you're cooking, it's not just about how am I gonna feed myself? It's how can I make this delicious? And so when we're playing this, you know, we want it to sound beautiful with the fingering. So try five, one, two. Press pause and just do that till you feel like you can do it in your sleep. And gently and delicately, again, gliding over, and then press play to go on. Now after your left hand does that, then it comes up here into treble clef. Notice that treble clef symbol. And that means you're coming up here and you play two more E's. And then the right hand plays its really high E's. Okay, so now let's put this whole section together just left hand. We have C, G, C, and then G, G, B, and then A, E, A, and then the E's, E, 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 then right hand's turn, then... Good, now press pause and put all of that left hand part together. Then press play to go on. Now hands together, that's gonna work like this. And then we get to this part where the hands take turns on D sharp E, D sharp E, D sharp E. Left hand, right hand, left hand. Playing the exact same two notes, but you switch hands just to kind of make it look fancy. Who knows what Beethoven was thinking. I mean, he could have just put that all in one hand, but that would get boring. So he's going left hand, right hand. And I like to slow down a little bit there, like you're kind of searching a little bit for something. And then it brings you back to the main theme. And here we go again. Then it repeats back. Slowing down a little bit. here is one note that changes to a D. Note that D. A lot of students neglect that. You gotta be careful of little changes that happen. That D goes up to C and then the song finishes with this A minor chord. Now you should know that this is just the A section of Beethoven's original for Elise which actually has two more full complete sections which put together you know makes a much longer song this is the main theme only of Fury Lease but it's not Beethoven's original it's just the first section it's the original form of the main theme but in the full version which you can get in another one of my tutorials you'll learn how to play the full piece which has you know this section which doesn't even sound like Fury Lease, but it's actually part of Fury Lease. And then it has this other cool section. Mm -hmm. 
So if you want a real challenge, it's, it's harder. Those two other sections are probably harder than what you just learned today. But uh, when you're ready for that challenge, that will be waiting for you. By the way, the full version of Free Release is a level six tutorial, just so you're ready for that. Last thing I wanted to talk about before I turn you loose to learn this and work on it is how to pedal Free Release. One of the common mistakes I hear students make in Free Release is too much pedal. You know, I'll hear, you know, just this bleeding pedal. Beethoven, in a lot of regards, was a classical composer. You know, he kind of bridged the classical period and the romantic. And by the romantic period, we're using lots of pedal. But in the classical period, stylistically, using very little pedal is usually best. And so in this piece, I encourage you to not over pedal. I would encourage you to only pedal the first three notes that the left hand plays and lift the pedal as the right hand begins to play. So these notes of the melody can be really clean and clear. Pedal, lift, pedal. Pedal, lift, pedal. And definitely don't pedal through this part or it'll just, you know, hearing that E and the D sharp in the same pedal is just atrocious if you ask me, you know, because we're hearing that clash, you know, so clean through here, pedal down, pedal up, down, up, down, down, up, down, okay? So with your pedaling, just be careful about that. When you get to all these E's, I would pedal through the whole thing. You know, so you continue to hear that low E even as you get to the high E. And then lift as you get to the D sharp. Last thing I wanted to talk about is dynamics and expression. Furlis is marked pianissimo at the beginning and it never even gets to a forte. At the highest we get to a mezzo forte here but then it immediately starts diminuendoing here. I would never get very loud. You're going to have some phrasing where it's gonna swell a little bit in the middle of the phrase, but then come back down. It needs to be played with a lot of tenderness and sensitivity. Now, let's put all of that together and hear a full performance of this main theme of Fury Lease. Great job learning how to play the main theme for Beethoven's Führer Elise. Happy practicing and see you next time. Hey, would you two like to hear an interesting story about Führer Elise? You sure. betcha! Okay, well, Führer Elise has become so famous over the years that I imagine there are very few people on the entire planet who haven't heard it. In fact, when I lived on the other side of the Pacific Ocean in Korea for a couple of years, and this is a true story, 
I found out that they had invented a very special way to let you know that it was time to take out your trash. The garbage truck had a loudspeaker that would play music. Oh, like on an ice cream truck? Yes, like an ice cream truck, except you wouldn't want to eat anything out of this truck. Yeah, gross. Well, as the garbage truck drove around, every week, guess what melody it would play over and over as it drove around picking up your trash? What? For Elise. What? Huh? You mean that beautiful song was like the trash anthem? Yeah. I don't know how Beethoven would feel about his piece being used as the theme for taking out your garbage. Indeed. So it'd be like singing, truck is coming, please take out your trash. Take out your trash. Take, take out, out your trash. trash. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did I just hear my favorite song? What? Hey, trash can appreciate true musical beauty too, you know. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm,